Dudley. The drive here to New Haven today is one that is not unfamiliar to me. For the first part of my childhood, my parents, Tim and Kim Donnelly, had a jewelry store just across the way at the Chapel Square Mall. I have fond memories of New Haven, but my God, I wish they were here today. Instead, our story took a turn that none of us could have ever imagined. In 2005, I had just graduated college and moved out of my parents' home in Bridgeport into my first New York City apartment. At work one evening, I got a phone call, followed by many more phone calls. Some were frantic, some were vague, but they all said one thing the same. My parents' jewelry store in Fairfield had been robbed, and I needed to get home, now. As I made my way by car from New York City to Bridgeport Hospital, what followed was a frantic chaos. More phone calls, more confusion. And as we pulled into the hospital parking lot, I don't think the car had even come to a complete stop when I jumped out and ran to my brother who was standing outside. I asked him what in the world was going on. With his head down and in his gentle way, he simply said, they're dead, both of them. Mom and dad are dead. That is our story, but our story is only one one of the hundred lives lost every day in this country to gun violence. Whether it be daily violence or suicide or mass shootings. Just two weeks ago, I sat at a table with friends having lunch who happened to also be gun violence survivors. As we had lunch, the news broke of an active shooter in El Paso. Not only did I relive my own pain, but I witnessed People who are now dear friends of mine relive their own trauma, seeing it on their faces. When someone you love dies by a gun or you experience a mass shooting, there is no normal for your life to go back to. Just this week, a reporter called me and asked me for my opinion on bulletproof book bags and whether or not I would be buying them for my children. The pit in my stomach when I think about that is the same feeling I had when I got an email letting me know that my daughter's preschool class had successfully completed their lockdown drill. My daughter is three years old. She is more practiced in lockdown drills than she is at riding a bike. I cannot accept this to be our normalcy. I refuse to raise this generation thinking that they don't deserve better. My children deserve better. Your children deserve better. Our country deserves better. I challenge you today, if you haven't been active before, consider today your own call to action. It's going to take all of us. It's not going to happen overnight, but we can't give up. The next time you tell someone you know, that has lost someone to gun violence or has endured a shooting. Before you tell them you're sorry for their loss or you're sorry for their experience, tell them what you have done. Tell them what you have done to make a difference. And if you struggle to answer that, and if you struggle to do that, then maybe you're not doing enough. Let's change that.